And uh, we are back talking to towns here on the town, AM 1530, FM 102.3, WCTR. Of course, online at WCTR.com. And uh, all of this uh, will be available as a uh, podcast as uh, soon as we can get it up on our webpage. Daniel Bongino uh, joining us, uh, candidate uh, U.S. Senate, uh, seat currently held by uh, Ben Cardin. Uh, last couple of minutes, I uh, figure we'll just have a, a little bit of fun and... Uh, Handicap the uh, GOP uh, presidential race, which is a lot of fun to handicap because it, right. it just it, it has more toss, uh, it has uh, more uh, turns and ups and downs than a roller coaster ride. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been all over the place, hasn't it? I, I like to say I'm still shopping. I don't, I don't know what to buy: the wheat bread, the white bread, the rye bread. I, I don't know at this point. Uh, I've listened to all the debates. Uh, the one part that, that disturbs me a little bit, not to be moroso, is the the attacks on. On, on Romney and Bain, you know. Listen, if we're gonna if we're gonna start attacking uh, things like that, let's come out with, uh, you know, let's not as Republicans, you know, attack capitalism. They're, they're, that, that, that just that strikes me as very bizarre. Republicans attacking capitalism. Right. That just strikes me as rather odd. All right. I mean, listen, I'm the first one to go after cronyism and things like that. And if there were illegal things that were done at Bain or 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 unethical practices, and you know, Keith, I can look in the eye and say, let's let's go after him legitimately. But if, if the attack is from Republicans that, hey, listen, th there was a company that was failing, another company came in and bought them out and sold off their assets, well, what was your solution as a Democrat, to let them fail anyway? At least there was some value created from that. Now, again, I'm not supporting any kind of cronyism or unethical practices at all, but uh, that part I don't like. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's shaping up right now to be uh, quite a route for a... Uh, Governor Romney, I mean, uh, he's the first one, I think, on the Republican side to win Iowa and New Hampshire. So someone's going to have to, uh, someone's going to have to take a stand here soon. I think South Carolina is maybe the last backstop if you intend on slowing down uh, that that train. You know. So, it, it, but uh, it it seems like it. Uh that, uh, that Romney is, is the one to me that would play well, play the best with the moderates, and has and he's the one that has the uh, the hardest time with the rank and file of the party, which is a fascinating position. So it's 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 it, it, it's almost this flavor of the month every month yeah. of someone that comes out that's the the anti Romney. Right, <laughs> right. It's like the Romney and the other guy, right? Yeah. And the other guy position. Well, now the problem is the other guy's a mix of other guys. Yeah. Now you're seeing that vote being split amongst uh, Newt, uh, Rick Santorum, you even saw John Huntsman make a play up in uh, New Hampshire. And he, you know, he's a candidate I think we should look at, too. He hasn't gotten uh, a lot of uh, media time, a lot of attention, but he has a great resume in Utah. He was a great, I was actually there at the White House when he was um, sworn in or nominated, I should say, by President Obama for the ambassadorship to China. I remember that day because I, I had known uh, uh, Governor Huntsman's staff from a presidential trip to Utah a while ago. And no one knew what the announcement was going to be, and I saw some of his staff running around. I thought, this is going to be interesting. What's going on here? He's a Republican. But he has a great record. Maybe we should uh, give him a look. But, you know, primaries are good things. I've said that uh, in my race. I'll say it in a presidential. Uh, voters are entitled to hear folks' ideas, and uh, we should kick the tires. And I don't think a long primary process is necessarily a bad thing. Look at the Democrats. Didn't hurt President Obama, did it? That primary, you remember this one up oh, until yeah. like the last day, and then they were talking about super delegates and all this nonsense. And uh, I think it actually helps because it focuses the attack consistently on President Obama. Here are our ideas amongst, even if they're split amongst three or four different candidates, and here's how they differ from the president. And I think uh, right now it's uh, th there's there's no comparison. The president's economic plan is clearly clearly not working. And of course, and then there's the uh, wild card, which is Ron Paul. Right. I mean, listen, he's got some. He's got some interesting ideas, and I think it was Sarah Palin who said uh, we shouldn't. Was it Palin who said we shouldn't ignore his ideas? I'm pretty sure I read something the other day in, uh, in a media outlet that we shouldn't ignore some, and, and we shouldn't. You know, some of his ideas on government spending and hard money are are very appropriate, uh, very very well-documented economic approaches to some of the maladies we face. And, and, and to write him off, I, I think, is foolish. I, I personally don't agree with him on foreign policy issues. I'm a, a staunch supporter, a pro-Israel supporter. I've traveled there myself recently on my own money. Um, I don't agree with him, but I, I, I don't write him off. I, I think portraying him as some kind of a fringe candidate is, is a mistake. You know, some of those, uh, you can't write off millions and millions of, of young voters. You know, if they, if they believe in something he's saying, that's something as Republicans we need to embrace and find out how we can capitalize on it and build our base. We've been hemorrhaging young voters for years. You know, I'm, I'm only 37 years old. I remember when I, 
uh, alive as an independent until I became a Republican in my 20s. And it really was, you know, listening to old uh, videos of Reagan and, and sound bites of Reagan that turned me on to the idea that the answer was within each one of us, not within some bureaucrat. Well, thank you very much. We have to wrap it up there. But uh, Daniel Bongino, a candidate uh, for uh, U.S. Senate, uh, thank you very much. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you again later. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate it.